bless the choir greatly. The Lord bless you greatly. I I congratulate those of you that weathered the rain. I did not allow the rain to stop you. As I have a conviction in my heart that no power can stop you from getting to where God is taking you to. Praise the name of the Lord. This morning when we saw the rain, we were concerned about brethren whose hearts are not yet strong. And this is not a rain as far as I'm concerned. It's a rain of blessing. I say it's a rain of what? A rain of blessing. It say if it say in the it say when um, you fret in the uh, with I know that touching Jesus will settle my case. As she touched Jesus, her case was settled. This morning, God will settle your case. Because all the pushes did not distract you, the rain did not stop you. Therefore, no power will be able to stop you from getting to where God is taking you to. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'd like you to raise up your right hand and say, after me, say, My Father, I want to hear your voice. If you are here, then do it very well. Say, My Father, say, Let today be my day. Lift up your voice and talk to the Almighty God. Let today be my day. Let today be my day. I want to be better than those who didn't come to church this morning. I want to be able to point out to one major testimony that you did in my life that settled me and sorted me out. Let today be my day. God bless you. Let today be my day. Let today be my day. Let today be my day. Don't let me go the way I came. 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 Put a new song in my mouth, O oh God, and light my coast. Settle me, O oh God, my sobra had a santaria. Only you can do what no man can do. This morning, Lord, I pray you will settle me. Every power that followed me to service this morning, saying that I will not get my blessing. The powers are broken today. The yokes are destroyed. In somebody's voice, are you lifting up your voice in prayers? Tell the Lord this morning, Daddy, settle me, O oh God. Daddy, Lord, settle me. Daddy lost. I want to have testimony so that people who, we, who saw me when I went at the rate, they will be able to say, No, I did not come in vain. Oh, Mazabro Hondo Santalia Bakulia Gashid Nidia. I know you have expectation in your heart. Why don't you tell the Lord? Meet me at the point of my needs. Address my matter, oh God. <laughs> in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. One of my sons called me during the beginning of the week after Sunday service, you know, was it Sunday or Monday? He said, Daddy, he said something happened. I said, what? He said, I carried my iPad on the car. I left it on the car and I drove and I, I don't know where the iPad fell. He said, I, by the time I returned back, nobody could see the iPad. The, inside the iPad, there are so many informations. I don't even know where to go about it. I said, did you participate in this 14 days program? Say yes. I said, the Almighty God, we arrange and you will see it. Was it two days ago he called me and said, the Lord has done it for me. I said, what did the Lord do? He said, miraculously and mysteriously, everyone arranged my iPad back to me intact. Praise the name of the Lord. Lift up your right hand and say after me, say, my father, everything I have lost, you know, you remember the testimony of my son who shared last Sunday when the, 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 the laptop they said getting another one is one point something million and the thing crashed and he called me and I said don't worry, God will arrange it miraculously after the 14 days program the laptop came up on its own Meanwhile, where he took it to, they say you should go and look for 250,000. Maybe they can do something. Maybe they are not even sure. But Jehovah Yahweh, the God of this mountain, he restored that particular laptop. He didn't pay a dime. Okay, he paid money for Moko Spirit. 150 naira. 
Lift up your hands and say after me. Say, my father, everything I have lost. Can I hear your voice louder? Say, everything I have lost. The God of this mountain, let the Lord restore them back to me. If your voice is louder, you are the one the Lord is talking about. Everything I have lost. Everything that I have lost. Everything that I have lost. Father, Lord, I pray. The God on this mountain. Lord, I pray, Jehovah Yahweh, let them be restored back to me. Everything that I have lost. Everything that I have lost. I see somebody today. You are recovering back. Lakuya Kabuli Gazabrahanda Santaria. Everything that I have lost to God, I recover them back so quickly and so sharply. Everything that I have lost, I recover them back. I recover them back. I recover them back. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I was in a meeting some days ago, sometimes ago with uh, Testimony Chapel Ministry, and that's where I brought this message of today. I preached there on the title Take Back Your Place. But this morning I'm preaching on when the Spirit of God moves. Praise the Lord. Lift up your two hands and say after me, say, my father, speak to me this morning. Lift up your voice and talk to the almighty God. My father, speak to me this morning. I want to hear God this morning, Lord. My father, speak to me this morning, O oh God. My redeemer, my shepherd, my master, my lover, speak to me this morning. Leprahanda Santaria Bashetiria. Rakuya Kabalia Baroko Toria Basantaria. My father speak to me this morning. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because we are a faithful God. You are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You will speak to every one of us like never before in the name of Jesus. At the end of all things, let us have reasons to praise your name. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Come on, jam your hands together for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Welcome somebody on your right or your left. Tell the person you are welcome into God's presence. The Lord is ready to settle you today. Tell that fellow. The Lord is ready to settle you today. Praise the name of the Lord. Tell that person, because you weather this rain, God will surprise you. Praise the Lord. We celebrate in the house. I beloved Pastor Kunle Itemi in the house. Please celebrate Jesus. God bless you. Hallelujah. When the Holy Spirit of God moves, <laughs> people of God, nothing in life happens when the Holy Spirit is not involved, and nothing happens. Something happens when the Holy Spirit steps in. And I will show you from scriptures. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8 verse 11. Romans 8 verse 11. It says, if, this, if the Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. So if that Spirit dwell in you, what shall he do? He said, it will quicken your mortal body. In other words, there's a, there's a quick ability in the Holy Spirit. That is to say, the work quicken means speed. In other words, it turns slow motion to fast motion. When the Spirit of God steps in, your slow motion becomes fast motion. If the Spirit that dwelleth, that raised Jesus from the dead, if it dwell in you, chapter 10 verse 38 how God anointed Jesus Christ of what? with what? with only ghosts and then power when the Holy Ghost is present power is inevitable you cannot carry Holy Ghost and not demonstrate power it's not possible the when you connect to the you put
put your hand in an electric current, what will happen to your body? You will express what? That is human power. Now when you are talking about spiritual power, excuse me sir, everything that is not working will start to work. No wonder the Bible told us Jesus was telling the children of the disciples in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. He said what? He said, he said, ye shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost come upon you, then you will what? Then you will now begin to do the work of the gospel. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Say, ye shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost is come upon you, then you shall be what? Witness unto me in Samaria, in Judea, and to the uttermost part of the earth. So in other words, you cannot do anything that is useful in the absence of the Holy Spirit. The Bible told us about Samson. The Bible says Samson, at every time when the Spirit enters into Samson, what ordinary man cannot do is done with ease. Hear this. After this meeting, difficult task shall, shall be easily executed. I say difficult task. Impossible task shall be easily executed in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1 in verse 1, the Bible says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and what? The Bible says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of the Lord, what? Moved upon the face of the waters. That was the card that settled the issue. The moment the Spirit of God was moving, God said, yes, I can do anything. And in verse 3, the Bible said, and God said, let there be light. What did the Bible say next? And there was, who did the light? The Holy Spirit. <laughs> Hear this child of God, after you experience the impartation of the Holy Spirit, hear this, in Possible assignment becomes easily executed. I see somebody in the house today. Some testimony you have never shared before in your life. You will share it after this meeting. Ah, Jesus then an angel appeared to Mary. And in the angel said, Mary, thou art favored among all women. For you shall what? You shall conceive and bear a child. He shall be a boy. And his name shall be called Jesus. So how can this be? Seeing that I have what? I have no man. Say no. Say the Holy Ghost will do what? The Holy Ghost will what? Will overshadow you. Karakatoria kasantaria. How come the Holy Ghost will overshadow a woman who has not met a man? It is because the Holy Ghost can do the impossible. The difference between a man that is excelling and a man that is struggling is the presence of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, this, sir. The Holy Ghost that will help you make a difference in life is touching you this morning. Child of God, you are taking your place. Somebody saying, I'm taking my place. I didn't hear you very well. How many of you are taking your place? Let me hear you shout a loud hallelujah. Ezekiel 37 verse 1. He said, and the hand of the Lord was upon me. And what? And carried me. Can somebody look at that scripture for me? Uh, 
Are we there? The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord mm. and set me down in the midst of the valley, yeah. which were full of bones. Let me tell you, people, child of God, when the spirit of God comes upon you, the revelation begins immediately. What begins immediately? I didn't hear you very well. Revelation begins immediately. Hmm. Bible says, I have been young and now I am old. I have never seen the righteous word forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. They were describing they were describing Joseph. They were saying Joseph. When Joseph was moving and Joseph had revelation about himself and Joseph saw that he was going to be a great man and his brothers were orchestrating his downfall, listen to me. The Bible confirmed why they, I mean, Joseph was able to blaze through all those battles. The Bible said, when the king who Joseph interpreted his dream to. When the king saw Joseph and he was talking about Joseph, he said, What? He said, Joseph, he said, a man upon whom the spirit of the gods dwell. There was a confirmation that there was a spirit. There was a spirit of the Lord that was dwelling in him that made a difference with his life. People of God, the moment when the Spirit of God is upon your life, He gives you an edge. Somebody saying, I desire the Holy Spirit. Can I hear it louder? Raise up your right and say, Father, baptize me with your Spirit. Come on, talk to the Almighty God quickly. Baptize me, O God, with your Spirit. Baptize me this morning, Lord, with your spirit. Baptize me this morning. I desire the spirit of the Lord. Baptize me this morning with your spirit. Baptize me this morning, oh God, with your spirit. Nekoli kraka shatala basetiria. Rakuri kasha brado sata le abakuri kashetiria. Ribu rokoto le abashende ribu soto le ababasata liya. La kalaka lo kroko shebra do satalia. Baptize me, O God, with what? Your spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Kindly open your Bible to Isaiah chapter 61. Look at first 11 verses. Isaiah chapter 61, the first 11 verses. Whoo! He said, and the spirit of the Lord was what? Oh, come on. Who is reading for me? Yes. The Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Mm. He has sent me to bind up the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the accept acceptable years of the Lord, mm. and the year of the day of vengeance of our, our God, to comfort all that mourn, Verse 3, to appoint unto them that mount in, in Zion, to give unto them beauty of ashes, the oil of joy, for mourning the garment of praise, for the spirit of heaviness, and they might be called trees of righteousness, and the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. It's okay, it's okay, you can read it down at home. The moment the Spirit of God came upon me, I became an instrument of healing. See, the Spirit of God was upon me because the Lord had anointed me to preach good tidings. A man that is carrying the Spirit of God, sir, will always be sharing good news. Your life will make a difference. Somebody is not, somebody is not believing. I say your life will make a difference. Okay, my life will make a difference. I didn't hear you very well. Revelation chapter number 1. Look at verse 10. 
Revelation chapter number 1, look at verse number 10. He said, I was in the spirit when? On the Lord's day. And I heard behind me a great voice of a trumpet. Hear this, sir. When you are not in the spirit, sir, you can never hear what heaven is talking about. Heaven determines what happens on earth. And once you want to know what is going to happen, do you know that there are some people who are going to die? One day I was in the, in the public bus, and as I sat down, the Holy Spirit put me into the future. He said to me, do you know what? You see that man that is coming like this? Yes, I saw, I said, I saw him. He said, do you know this one that is coming behind there? That man that is coming here? He said, when the two of them meet, they will fight. <laughs> he said, they will fight. So I, I was sitting at the, at the side where there was window. So I was watching what will happen. He said, they will fight. Watch. Then I saw the two of them meet. Do you want to wound me? Do you want to wound me? You are not stupid. Are you talking to me? Am I on it? Come see fight. The first one gave the other one slap. Pa! The other one said, And I was watching. There are some times the Holy Ghost will tell me, Don't go out. There is nothing outside there today. Everywhere is dry. I see that too. That scripture we read in that Revelation chapter 1 verse 10. He said, What? He said, And the Spirit of the, And I heard the voice. I have seen many people running a task getter. They run a task getter because they live their life by chance. You cannot continue to live your life by chance and expect to have results. You take charge of your life by engaging the Holy Ghost. No matter how much powerful you are. You cannot begin to use your hand to turn this fan. After a while, what will happen? Hand will be paining you. But if you want the fan to work and you enjoy it, make sure that they bring light there. All you need to do is to put plug back and on it. Then, what will happen? You will begin to enjoy breeze. You are not the one controlling it. It is controlling itself. Under power. Hear this, sir. All good things are the things that God wants you to achieve. He has given you the Holy Ghost for you to make it easier for you to achieve them. Jesus Christ said, I go. He said, if I do not go, the comforter will not come. Who is this comforter? Holy Ghost. Bible was talking about Peter. Bible said, Peter, Jesus Christ was, he was with Jesus Christ physically and Peter could not stand for Jesus at a critical time. When Jesus was physically available. But immediately when Jesus Christ has gone and Peter carried the Holy Ghost in the absence of Jesus, he was able to proclaim Christ. Even to the point that they were to kill him. He said, don't kill me like the Lord Jesus Christ. Kill me upside down. He was happy to die. Once you carry the Holy Ghost, sir, you take charge of your life. Don't say I'm taking charge. I didn't hear you very well. Taking charge of my life. I'm taking charge of my life. Several times I've seen God showed up. When, when it looks like all the doors are locked. I see God show up. Why? Because I engaged the Holy Ghost. That's your saying, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost come upon you. That's Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and verse 19. Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and verse 19. He said, And the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to who? To the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. In other words, if you are healing a person who is brokenhearted, then do you think that you will experience a broken heart? Can you imagine a woman who had no child? Who has never been seen a man? Got pregnant. Under the shadow of the Holy Ghost. Now tell me. If Jesus, if the Holy Ghost will do that. For a woman. A single woman. How much more you. That you are looking for a husband. How much more you. That you are looking for a business. How much more you. That you are looking for a career. How much more you. That you are looking for a contract. There is nothing difficult for this almighty God to do when you engage the Holy Spirit. 
I have seen difficult doors open with ease. I have seen people that are trusting God for the fruit of the womb carry babies. Why? Because the Holy Ghost was involved. I want you to do a, 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 a mysterious thing. You are going to shout, Holy Ghost, move in me now. Are you ready? Want to go? Holy Ghost, move in me now. Yeah, this. Excuse me, sir. You make a difference in life. I think it was Pastor David that was sharing this. He was driving from somewhere like Ore. Then the vehicle entered into empty tank. And there was fuel scarcity. There was no fuel anywhere. And he was wondering, how am I going to go? And the Holy Spirit spoke to him. Here, at the junction of confusion in your life, Holy Spirit will speak. And the Holy Spirit speaks to me and says, son, say what? You know what? You're going to carry this vehicle. Don't look at the speedometer. Don't what? Don't look at the speedometer. Keep driving. That's how he was president. Ooh, from Ore. I don't know all the stations that you get to, but I know that you get to some places. Ore, from Ore. I know you get to Ijebode. Abi, from Ijebode, you get to Shagam. Or is it Shagam you come first? Yes, from Ijebode, you get to Shagam. From Shagam, you get to. Even if you are using. <laughs> the food tank self will not even carry you there. Not talk of empty tank. And he entered Lagos and he was still driving. He was not looking at speedometer. Ooh, Holy Spirit said that I should not look at speedometer. If you look at speedometer, where we finished. And he drove oh, to his house in Yaba. By the time when he parked, where he finished. Hear this. Sir. If you don't engage the Holy Ghost that gives you edge. You are cheating yourself. The Bible says, is there anything difficult for me to do? I will tell you the keys to connect it to the Holy Ghost. Several times, when I don't even know what to pray about again, I enter into the Spirit. What am I saying? It is not my headache. I don't even want to know what I'm saying. But I know I'm speaking in tongues. Le prako proko po roko koko roko sheka la kroko totaria. E kraka sha prako poro potoria kapali brakataria. E kaloko logo 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 erika ka. I know one of the things I was just saying is that all the enemies of my life they will die. <laughs> Any trouble of your destiny will die. Somebody can can't get that one. But unfortunately, many people they react negatively to the presence of the Holy Spirit. We are not just to be open to the Holy Spirit, but we are to passionately pursue Him. But there are several warnings given to us in scriptures of attitudes and actions to avoid in our relationship with and to the Holy Spirit. Number one, you must never do not neglect or ignore the Holy Ghost. If you want to really, 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 really Engage the Holy Ghost. Do not. Do not neglect or what? Ignore the what? The Holy Ghost. Paul uses the word ignorant 13 times in the epistles about the spiritual gifts. Brothers, I do not want you to be ignorant. That's what he said. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. I do not want you to be ignorant. I do not want you to be ignorant. I do not want you to be ignorant. I don't want you to be ignorant. Ignorance is not a it is not an excuse why you should not do what is expected of you. That is number one. Do not neglect, do not ignore the Holy Ghost when he is speaking. Number two, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Do not grieve him. If you want to engage the Holy Ghost and you want him to walk with you or for you, make sure you do not grieve him. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. 
speak right words. Anger, malice, unforgiveness, they grieve the Holy Spirit. Number three, do not quench the Spirit of God. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19. Do not quench the Spirit of God. Number four, do not blaspheme the Spirit of God. Don't blaspheme the Spirit of God. Therefore I say to you, all kinds of sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the but the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven men. Matthew chapter 12 verse 31. You can read it to verse 33. You cannot blaspheme the Holy Ghost by saying it doesn't exist. By saying it's not God. You have to be careful. You want to engage the Holy Spirit. Do not insult Him. Don't insult Him. How much more severe a punishment do you suppose it deserves? Who has trampled underfoot the Son of God and has regarded the blood of the covenant that sanctified him to be a common thing and has insulted the Spirit of grace? Hebrews 10 29. When you insult someone, they remove, you, they remove their presence from you. If, for example, now I come to your place, and then you insult me. What is the best thing for me to do? What do I do when you insult me? When I come to your place? I say, who invited you here? What will I do? Straight. The Holy Ghost leaves you. Immediately you insult him. Do not insult him. You want the Holy Spirit to speak and to fight for you in the journey of life. Do not tempt the Spirit of God. Acts chapter 5 verse 9. It's the story of Peter. I mean, the story of Peter. And who? The, uh, what, what's the name of these people? Ananas and Sapphira. In Acts chapter 5 verse 9. The Bible says, and the feet of, men, of the men who buried your husband at the door. And they will carry you out also. Why? What did they do? The Bible said, they made a vow to God. And they did not they did not what redeem the vow. They partially redeemed the vow. They kept some back and they left, gave some out. And because of that, they died. Why? What killed them? They died because they tempted the Spirit of God. So those are the attitude that the Holy Ghost cannot tolerate. If you want Him to dwell with you, you need to understand this. You want the Holy Spirit to dwell with you? You want the Holy Spirit to work for you? You want the Holy Spirit to be your friend? The people of God, as wonderful as the Holy Spirit is, these are the things he cannot tolerate. The same act of God that blessed Obededom was the same act of God that killed Uzziah. The same thing that is a blessing can still become what? A problem. <laughs> the Yoruba speak a, a proverb, say, the one, the teeth that the dog used to play with his children is the same one that he used to bite them. So what is the attitude required if you must enjoy the presence of the Holy Spirit? Number one, you must be born of the Spirit. You must be what? Born of the Spirit. Jesus answered in John chapter 3 verse 5. John chapter 3 verse 5. He said, truly, truly, I say to you, unless a man is born of what? Of water and the spirit. What shall happen? He said, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Except a man is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So in other words, baptism by water is not enough. Holy Ghost baptism is also important. Jesus answered and said, Truly, truly, I say unto you, unless a man is born of water and, of, and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. John 3, verse 3 to 8. So, be born of the Spirit. Number two, requirement, if you are going to enjoy the Holy Spirit, you must receive and be baptized in the Spirit. 
You must receive and be baptized of the Spirit. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. I said it earlier. He said, but ye shall receive power when the Holy Ghost come upon you and you shall be my witness in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the ends of where? Ends of the earth. Matthew chapter 3 verse 11. John the Baptist was talking. Look at what he said. He said, I indeed baptize you with water to repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I. He said, whose shoes I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with what? With fire. So a man that is going to enjoy the presence and the beauty of the Holy Spirit must be somebody who what? Who receives and is baptized in the Spirit. Number three, if you are going to enjoy the company of the Holy Spirit, you must be continuously filled. You must be what? You must be continuously filled in the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18. He said, do not be drunk with wine. For it is reckless living. But be ye what? But be ye filled with what? With the Spirit. You must fill yourself with the Spirit of God. How do you fill yourself with the Spirit of God? On a daily basis, you are speaking in tongues until you are full. I was praying for one of my sons in the UK. And I, I told him, I said, you know what? You know, this matter is a very tough matter. For you to deal with this matter, you need to pray in tongues. And I told him, pray in tongues six hours every day for seven days. With fasting. Marathon fasting. And I spoke, he called, spoke with me this morning. I said, Alpha, I said, sir, I am 100% in tune. Six hours every day. I, I engaged a young woman, Mrs. Betty Green, in Abuja, and I, her husband was so difficult, very, very difficult, unbearing man. He's a rich man. He's a big man in NMPC, and because he's so powerful, so rich like that, the, the woman has no work because she made her a housewife, beat her regularly, intimidate her frequently. When he's coming, the heart of the wife is beating bang, bang, bang. So when I went to minister sometimes ago in Abuja, and then they brought her to meet me. I said, you know what you're going to do? You're going to pray in tongues three, three days. Six hours. Ah, he said, I have never prayed in tongues for ten minutes before. I said, you will pray in tongues for six hours. He did the first day. Le kola klokoto nde klekin gerebo. Bragandoro kotondro koto didi di gede proko shatalia. Ragalo blotosa prahanda senkeria. She said when she, was, when she thought that she had spent six hours... When she looked at the watch, it was 15 minutes. <laughs> she said to herself that I am in trouble now. Rika Baba. But she succeeded after a series of painful moments. She did six hours. She is not finished the six hours when the husband just came into her room and frustrated. So I don't know what came over me. I don't know what happened to me. And he heard the leg of the woman and I said, please, I'm sorry. And the woman said, Daddy, is this how this thing works? I said, yeah, it works when you do it rightly. The power of God, the presence of God works. He said, I will be doing it every day. <laughs> if this is what will make my husband to begin to hold my leg every day, I will be doing it regularly. Praise the name of the Lord. You must be filled with the Holy Spirit. Number four, you must know and see the Spirit. You must know the Spirit of God. You must know. You must. He, he knows you, but you too must know Him. Many at times when we are ministering like that, sometimes the Holy Spirit will say, no, no preaching. Minister, I want you to prophesy. I want you to bless. Hallelujah. If you look at John chapter 14, verse 16 to verse 18. John chapter 14, verse 16 to verse 18. Say, I will pray the Father, and He will give you another counselor, that He may be with you forever. Say the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, for it does not know him. Neither does it know him. 
But you know him, for he lives with you, and you will be in him. I will not leave you fatherless. I will come to you. So when I'm, we just say, even though in my physical absence, the Holy Spirit will be my presence in your life. Hallelujah. Number five. Not only must you know the Spirit of God, you must be led by the Spirit of God. You must be led. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 14. Romans chapter 8 verse 14. The Bible says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, who are they? They are the sons of God. So if you want to say you are a child of God, the question we ask you is, who leads you? Is it the Spirit of God that leads you or your flesh? If it is the Spirit of God that leads you, then you are a son of God. For as many that are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. Number six, if you are going to enjoy the benefit of the Holy Spirit fully, you must learn to pray in the Spirit on a regular basis. First Corinthians chapter 14 verse 14. First Corinthians 14 verse 14. He said, for if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is what? It's unfruitful. You know, that's what we tell you. When you are praying in tongues and you are reasoning, what am I saying? Then you don't need to know because your reasoning is unfruitful. You don't need to reason. You need to think. What, what, what language am I speaking? It's not your headache. Just speak it. Jude verse 20. You know, there's only one chapter in Jude. It says what? But you, beloved, build yourself up in your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. So if you are not praying in the Holy Ghost, you are cheating yourself. Number seven. If you must enjoy the presence of the Holy Spirit, you must walk in the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5 verse number 16. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. It says what? It says, I say then, walk in the spirit and what shall happen? And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. If you want to conquer flesh, then speak in tongues. If you want to conquer the lust and the desires of the flesh, then speak in tongues. Then finally, if you want to enjoy the blessings and the benefit of the Holy Spirit, Hear the Spirit and obey Him. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 15. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 15. He said, Today, if you will hear His voice, do not add in your heart as in the rebellion. A great definition of moving in the Holy Spirit is to so flow with the Lord as to not cast to shadows. You must not cast any shadow. God is here. And you know it. Several years ago, many years, something around that 1996, that's 21 years, no, 1993, 94, 94, that's about 23 years ago. As I was in the workers' meeting in the redeemed those days, I heard the voice of the Lord speak to me amongst the brethren. I said, tell the people to pray against fire. And I was very shy. I was shy because I was being careful so that I would not be misunderstood. And right there, I just called one of the pastors, one of the ministers then, said, the Lord said that we should pray against fire. They said, say, 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 say it now. Say the word of knowledge. As I came, I said, praise the Lord. The Lord said that we should pray against fire heartbreak. As I was saying, pray against fire one of the ministers said, don't, don't say, ah! That's exactly what the Holy Spirit told me. And then we prayed. The next Sunday when we gathered together, one of the sisters had a fire accident. In fact, they took her to uh, this place where they used to um, they, they handle fire cases. It was only God that didn't allow her to die. She had, what is the highest degree of bones from head to toe? The Holy Spirit sees ahead of time. He sees what the devil is orchestrating. He sees what the devil is planning. And then he prepares your heart on how to navigate it. Several times. I'll hear the voice of the Holy Spirit tell me, don't pass that way. Don't pass that way. 
So that I go, somebody, the Lord will tell me, he said, don't go to that place. There are some of your resources, some financial blessing that you should have enjoyed. If you have had the Holy Spirit, you will have enjoyed it. I enjoy it tomorrow. Many a times, I will just be seated like this, and, it, I, and then there will be no money in my hand. I will say, God, what am I going to do? Ah, God. And I begin to pray. When I finish praying in tongues, I will hear the voice of God say, carry your phone, call Lagwaja, and say, hello, how are you doing? I'll carry my phone and say, hello, how are you doing? I just I should say hello to you. I say, ah, thank God. Yes, the Lord has been speaking to me about you, sir. Can you send me your account number? <laughs> in the journey of life, you will not be stranded. I'm a practical embodiment of testimony. I'm not saying it because I'm not saying it. For those of you that are close to me, you will know. I'm telling you, sir. The Lord spoke to me one day, say, son. He said, pray that in the journey of life, you will not be stranded. I lifted up my voice. I prayed that prayer madly. See, today I've never been stranded. Not once. I want to pray that prayer for somebody. You will not be stranded. What can make you not to be stranded is to engage the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, I hear. Anytime you go farther away from the Holy Ghost, you deny yourself of blessings and opportunities. Privileges. One day I walked into the, into the deliverance room where, where, they were, where, 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 where we, we used to, I was part of those people that take deliverance. But that day I was not really interested in joining them for deliverance. I just wanted to say hello to them. As I walked inside, ah, I'm telling you in the name of Jesus Christ, may you be around people who hear the voice of God. Though. That's why if you have a pastor that cannot hear God, then you are losing. Thank God that on this mountain we hear God. I'm telling you, sir. We hear God on this mountain. And right there, the Lord, as, I, as I walked in there, I was, I was greeting them. I said, okay, brother, lady, how are you doing? Uh, brother, my mate, help me, sir. As I was to go like this, the Lord said, stop. As I stopped, say turn, as I turned. Say, look at that woman there. I said, I said yes. Say, call her. I said, sister, come. I said, what have you come for? Say, I've come for deliverance. Say, I've come for deliverance. I said, yes. Okay, come in, come in. I said, come in. Come, come. Who told you you need deliverance? Ah! He said, I've been trusting God for the fruit of the womb for the past five years. I have never been pregnant for one day. I have never been pregnant and then after pregnancy they did not say I had miscarriage. I have never been pregnant for one day before in my life. I did not say to me, say to her, as she was standing in front of me, I was the only one hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. They said to her, say, yeah, what did I say to her? Say, say to her that where is her husband? I said, Where is your husband? He said, He's there. Say, call her, call him. The man came groom like that. As he came and stood before me like this, I was hearing the voice of God say to me. Tell them that they should go home and go and meet. Ah. No prayer. He said, no prayer. Go and meet. No prayer. In the name of Jesus, you will not miss your divine timing. You didn't get my prayer. I said, you will not miss your divine timing. There is a timing for everything. That was that afternoon, but they were wrongly located. So heaven used me as an instrument to connect them at a time when heaven will locate them. Am I talking to somebody here? Do you know that the name of the child that came out of that particular thing is her name is Jennifer? Because I went to preach in a church, in one of the leading churches, and then the lady was blocking me and saying, Stop. Say, that is my that is the father of my daughter. And I was telling their pastor. And then the pastor said, ah, Pastor, one you let me on my uh, 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 go for a bit. I have only one wife. He said, no, 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 no. It's not like that. He said that. He said that God used you. Say, hey. And she remembered that time when she was talking to me, that girl was close to about, I think she was about 14 years. 14 years or so. It was my joy, sir. That was my joy. When I look back, I see when, how the Holy Ghost has helped me severally. How I cannot count several times. I hear the voice of God say to me, this is the season of this sister. That's the season of that sister. That's the season of... The Lord is saying to me to tell somebody, it is your season. Listen to me. Any man that has capacity and connects to the Holy Ghost have edge over his mates. 
I was ministering Pastor Bukri's church. I think Dick and Solomon was there with me. You know, by the time when I finished there, the whole place was on was on fire. Am I correct, sir? Okay, it's not around. That was two days ago. Ah! I am talking to somebody tonight. Heaven over your life is opened. I was in the, in the office one day. I think I've shared this testimony with you guys. In the, in, in, in Redeem. I was pastoring in Redeem, a Redeem church. And they told me one of my our members, the wife couldn't deliver a baby. And that she, and I told them in the church. I met I came to the church, I pioneered the church. I met about twenty two sisters that were trusting God for the fruit of the womb, twenty two of them. To the glory of God, 21 of them delivered baby in my sight. One of them is this sister there. Praise the Lord. Of course, she followed me. But what I want to bring out here is this. On that very day, that woman could not deliver. And I given them instruction. I said, how many minutes did I say? 30 minutes or 20? How many minutes? Mommy, remind me. Whether 15 minutes or 30 minutes, I say 30 minutes the labor. From point of labor to delivery is 30 minutes. This lady labored for six days. When my heart is overwhelmed, you will lead me to the rock that is higher than I. That is higher. And I told them, when they said, the lady is laboring for six days. Do you imagine when they labor, a woman is laboring for six days? Laboring with serious pain. And the husband now come. They, were, they carried her to the hospital without my consent anyway. But there, by the time they said, say, ah, she's laboring, she's laboring. I said, they should go and bring her. I'm talking about when the Holy Spirit reveals issues to you. And I was in the workers' meeting. It was a Saturday. And we are holding hands to pray for the Sunday service. And as we are praying, they, they, the sister and they, they, they carried the sister across my office. I saw them through the window like that as I was holding hands. And I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit speak. He said, do you know why she cannot deliver the baby? I said, I don't know. He said, because she slept with another man in a state of pregnancy. That without pregnancy, she slept with another man. I was not her husband. That all, and I asked the Holy I said, what do we do to her? To help her? And I said, the Lord said, the only way that can reverse this matter is if she opens her mouth and tells her husband what she did. I said, hey, okay. So whenever I'm coming in, say, hey, whenever, hey, I don't know what is happening. I am confused. Listen to me. At your point of confusion, God will be speaking to you. And the Lord spoke to me. I, I said, I said, bro, excuse me. The bro excused me. And then I was with the lady alone. And he was crying. I said, come, open up and talk to me. You slept with another man in a state of pregnancy. She just held my leg. See, how do you know? The only person that knows is me alone. Even that man that slept with her, they didn't know she was pregnant. There are some secret issues, sir, that the Holy Ghost knows about. That when he unravels it to you, he settles matters. Right there! As she was, she was saying, Ah, how did you know? How did you know? I said, I don't know. The Holy Ghost told me. And I said, Now, what do we do now? I said, Daddy, what do we do? What do we do? I don't want to. The Lord said, I said, The Lord said to me, You don't have long time to. to carry this baby. If you stay too long, you have to open up and tell your husband that he will have to pray for you. Say that I'm ready. I don't want to die. So I called the brother. I said, bro, bro. He said, bro. Uh, where does that? So how many father do you have? I said, he said, I have one father. He said, who is the father? He said, it is me. Are you sure about your father? I said, yes, you, have you are my father. Okay. He said, is there anything I will tell you to do that you will not? They said, nothing in this world. I said, think very well, Luke. Say nothing. Say if I tell you to put your hands in fire, will you put it? Say straight because I know it is good for me. Say good. Yes, sister, tell him. 
this is how I say, mm, 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 mm. so I rock, mm, mm, mm. tell him what happened. Then she opened up and told him. The man said, yay! Yeah! Iwa! Ile! Yeah! Ah! Opa! I said, continue to, oh, met a lot of people, and let her know her baby. To bati shekwe fun, to bati ku, iwa ni koloma deru egbe. Ah, that did this is too small. See, how many father do you have? He says it's only one. I said, who is the one? I said, it is you. Is there anything I'll tell you to do that you know? They say, no, but ah, this is difficult. I said, your wife has 30 more minutes to leave. Waste time. I don't have much time. We don't pray for our Lord. Ah, go over the yobu, go over go. Say fi ben yele. Wa agba dura fula tokwe. Ah, he say say that kind of prayer. Ah, he say dura. Daddy, ti go do no si go agba dura fu. Oh yes, adure o ni shishe. Your prayer will not work. And then she joyfully, with joy, flowing in his heart, because of the love that he didn't want his wife to die, forgive her. And laid hand on the woman and prayed from his heart for her. She had about 20 more minutes. By the time when she got to the hospital, she didn't spend 10 minutes before the baby came out. The voice of the baby, the voice of the mother, the mother and baby today, they are bubbling very well. Why? The Holy Ghost. She would have died had it not been the Holy Spirit. That stepped in. Hear this in the journey of life. You will not be stranded. Can I receive a louder amen from you? I say the journey of life, you will not be stranded. I say the journey of life, you will not be stranded. I say the journey of life, you will not be stranded. In the name of Jesus Christ. Three things to do with the Holy Spirit. Let me quickly mention them. You must do these three things if you must enjoy the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Number one, honor him as a guest. Listen, you must celebrate him. Holy Spirit, you are sweet. Oh, you are welcome to my heart. I enjoy you. You are so beautiful. You are the best. How many of you have had Pastor Benny in several times when he's worshiping God? Oh, you are sweet. Sweet Holy Spirit, I love you. I love you. You are the best. Can you imagine if your son or daughter is saying, Daddy, you are the best daddy in the world. Yeah, you will put your hands in your pocket and you say, Come on, son, go and buy biscuits. <laughs> so when you do that to the Holy Spirit, you're the best. You say, Come on, son. That matter you have been trusting God for for the long time. Take it. Number two thing you must do, seek him. The first one I say what when I say honor him. John 16 verse 13. Hold on to that scripture. John 16 verse 13. Honor him. Number two, seek him. Luke chapter 7 verse 7. Say, ask. Seek. Then you will find. Then the third one, give him freedom and liberty. Don't box him. We want him to be fully maximized in your life. Don't box the Holy Spirit. Let there be freedom. Let there be liberty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Children of God, never rush the Holy Ghost. Avoid holding and rushing in the presence of the Holy Spirit because He has so much to say, and His word to say are more important than the things you are going after. Pray the Spirit, get involved with Him. People of God, there are some contracts that you will get this, this season, they will be out of the instruction of the Holy Spirit. Let me give you one more. Never argue with him. Even when the instruction is not convenient. Never argue with the Holy Spirit. Even when the instruction is what? Is not convenient. Everything is about time and season. The Holy Spirit is the one that helps you to maximize time in life. You maximize time when the Holy Spirit is, is a, when you obey the voice of the Holy Spirit. Let me say this, and I'm parting you with this one. 
never disobey the voice of the Holy Spirit. Did you hear what I said? Never do what? Never disobey the voice of the Holy Spirit. Why? If you disobey the voice of the Holy Spirit, you are harming yourself, not God. For example, the Holy Spirit tells you, Son, rise up. Empty your bank account and go and give it to the work of God. He said, Le kopo kopo shapa. Le kranga ranga leke. I bind the devil speaking to me now in the name of Jesus Christ. Eh, hey, you bind. There are sometimes the Holy Spirit will go outside the ways of men. Praise the name of the Lord. Do you know that somebody is in the house here today? He can single-handedly raise the block of this church. But they'll be struggling. They'll be struggling. By the time when I finished doing some teachings yesterday, I mean two days ago in Pastor Bookie's church, everybody, almost, almost everybody, am I correct, sir? Hear this, sir. There are some principles that will rescue you out of the problems of life. If you connect to the understanding of those principles, you, 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 become, you become a celebrity of time. After this meeting, sir, your life will never remain the same again. You are not living your life to please any man. Am I talking to somebody this morning? You are living your life to please God. The essence of life is not about you. It's about God. Every day God allows you to spend extra. It's about God. Hear this. That is why he released the Holy Spirit. God needs you to obey him more than you need, than you need yourself to obey the, the, the laws of life. Holy Spirit is going to help us. Worship God. Worship the Holy Spirit. In the middle of the night, that time you are using for television, use it to worship God. How great thou art. And after you have worshipped God, worship God, and worship God, then you begin to speak in tongues. Then in the moment, you will just stand one day at a spot. And then you will hear the voice of God say to me, your helper of destiny is waiting for you in the Bible. Let me run out with this story because time is gone. Baba Deboye was sharing his testimony and I believe it's going to benefit us. A man came to meet him and told him that he was going to help him build a, a, a place in the, whether it was in the campground or so. Without asking him to do it, the man just used his money and was building the place for him. And then when he finished building, he now began to harass Baba Deboye for money. I want to collect my money. I want to collect my money. The man said, you, you know you are the one that came to say you want to do it. And if, he said, I want my money. It became an embarrassment. He collected them in business, collected them in business, and then he got to a time, whether it was now 1,500, in those days, so, whether 1,000 or 2,005 or something like that. And Baba Dibu said, okay, 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 okay. Come and collect that money tomorrow by 6 p.m. Mm. And the man spoke to the Lord. Le kopore and as he was speaking to the Lord, the Lord was speaking to somebody in Kano. Rise now. Enter the bus to Lagos. I will tell you where to stop. <laughs> and the man took a bus from Kano. And he told him, he said, carry 2,500 naira in a... No, it was, was 6,000 something. Carry it to an envelope. I will tell you who to give. And then he entered from Kano. And he, the vehicle was going, 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 going. When they almost got to redemption camp, he had the voice of the Lord say to him, Oh yeah, stop there. There is a church opposite crossover. Go ask for the general overseer there. The general overseer. He doesn't know the name of the church. He has never seen Baba Deboe before. He doesn't know Baba Deboe before. He doesn't know him anywhere. And then, all of a sudden, you know, Put on the big generator. It's like that one wants to go off. And all of a sudden, he just heard, you know, the voice of God saying, Stop there. And he stopped. He told the driver, Stop. He stopped. He crossed over, went to the redemption camp. He said, Please, I'm looking for who is the general overseer of this church. And then they took him to Pastor Deboe. At that point, one hour to the time when he gave that man, he knew that man would come. No money from anywhere. What am I going to do? What type of embarrassment is this? As he lay his hand like this, sleeping like this, a knock came into his office. Call, call, call. Say, sir, there's somebody who wants to see you. 
Say, let him in. As he came inside, he said to him, Sir, my name is so, 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 so. I came all the way from Kano. The Lord led me to bring this seed to the general overseer of this church. I don't know the name of the church, but God said I should give it. Give the seed. The man of God collected the seed from his hand and prayed for him. He didn't know how much was inside that envelope. But hear this. Hear this. When the man left, as Pastor Debo was counting the money, one, two, three, the money that that man was going to collect is 6,500, that money was exactly 6,500. Not long after the man has finished counting, like I put in his thing on that, and then saying, Daddy, I thank you. As I was saying, Father, I thank you, like this, his door was knocking. Okay, okay, okay. And that man must have been saying, I know he will give me a story. All those that are waiting for you to carry shame, they will be disappointed. And right there, as the man opened the door, he stood there. He didn't talk. You don't want somebody want to mock you. <laughs> what do you want to say next? You want to hear? And as he opened the door like this, he was looking at Baba Deboe's. And he was not talking. He was just looking at him. And the man said, yes. He said, ah, what is yes? You said I should come six o'clock. This is past six. I added minutes to the six. I am here. <laughs> and the man of God brought out the money and gave it to him. At the last point, when you should carry shape, Holy Ghost will show up. People of God engage the Holy Spirit, sir. Take time and spend time in His presence. Take time and come for Bible study and get understanding of God's word. Take time and come for communion service so that you can connect to the power of the Holy Ghost. Take time and come for our breakthrough. These are the things that will connect you like a block to the Holy Ghost and set you your case forever. I see the house. I hear the voice of God say to me, there's somebody here. Your pain will soon turn to joy. Sorry, I'm not talking to everybody. I'm not talking to everybody. So not everybody should say amen. He said one person here. He said your pain will turn to joy very soon. Again, the Holy Ghost. Spend time in His presence. Spend more time studying the word, word of God. Spend more time praying in the Holy Ghost. And see what the Lord can do. How big is your challenge? It's never bigger than what the Holy Spirit can do for you. Am I talking to somebody here? Somebody saying, I'm, take, I'm changing, I'm changing, I'm changing my location. I'm taking over. I am taking my place. Lift up your voice and begin to talk to the Almighty God. I'm taking my place. I am changing over. I'm taking over. I am taking my place. Oh, come on, talk to the Almighty God. I am taking my place, oh God. Never to be pitied again, oh God. The Lord is going to settle you, people of God. The Lord is going to settle somebody here. The Lord is going to settle you. The Lord is going to settle me. Male borobo shembra handa santa lia bakuri e kasata lia. Pradosa kali boroko tanda li boroko shengeri abasanda I believe you are the one that the Lord wants to speak to. That's why you are here. You are not here by chance. You are not here by error. You are here for a purpose. There's a reason why God brought you. Lord, let the Holy Spirit rise up to help me. I need the help of the Holy Ghost in the journey of life. I can do nothing without the Holy Spirit. Help me, O Lord. If you are here this morning, you have not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, can you come out? You have not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, come out and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. If you have not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, come out, come out, come out, receive it. So that you can begin to engage it. God bless you, God bless you. You are here. You want to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's here. It's here. The Holy Ghost is here to help you. Anybody again? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? You want to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Come out. Come out. Come out. The Lord wants to help you. So that you begin to engage the Holy Ghost. You begin to hear the voice of the Lord. Baba
As you go, the Lord will go with you. This week shall be the best week so far. In the journey of life, you will not be embarrassed. In the journey of life, you will not be embarrassed. Every path of destiny will locate you. Everywhere you go, the eyes of God will never leave you. You will not be located where the presence of God will not be available. In the name of Jesus. In the journey of life from glory to glory, you will not die young. This week, evil will not come near your dwelling place. Everything you lay your hands upon this week shall turn to gold. You are favored. I say you are favored. I say you are favored. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your name, O God. In Jesus' name we pray. I say as you go, the Lord will go with you. This week shall be the best week so far. In the journey of life, you will not be embarrassed. In the journey of life, you will not be embarrassed. Every path of destiny will locate you. Everywhere you go, the eyes of God will never leave you. You will not be located where the presence of God will not be available. In the name of Jesus. 
in the journey of life from glory to glory you will not die young this week evil will not come near your dwelling place everything you lay your hands upon this week shall turn to gold you are favored i say you are favored i say you are favored in the mighty name of jesus thank you father glory be to your name of god in jesus name we pray